In the heart of York County, Pennsylvania, just three miles north of the city of York, stands a musical legacy tracing its roots to the late 1800s. The village of Emmigsville, located in Manchester Township, is less than one and a half square miles in total area. But despite its small size, an eponymous community band has continued to call this village its home for over 150 years. The Emmigsville Band is a community concert band that has been providing musical entertainment to the region since its founding in 1872. In this documentary, we'll explore the history of the band, meet the members both past and present, and state what has contributed to the ensemble's longevity as one of the oldest town bands in the United States, and one of the few remaining in York County. Let's begin by understanding the band's origins from the perspective of some of its current members. My name is Dick Wills. I'm a trombonist. My name is Jim Rollins, presently the director. My natural instrument is trumpet. I'm Don Ryan. 70 years I've been in the band. Uh, I've been with the band 22 years. August of 1976. Since I was 10 years old. Now our official name is the Acme Cornet Band. The band was formed and called the Acme Cornet Band. The Acme Cornet Band is the real name of the band. And that's because we started as employees of the Acme Wagon Company. And in those days, it was not unusual for big employers to have a company band. The nice thing about this, we own our own band hall. They bought a plot of land in Amesville. And this band bought the band hall and actually had the building transported here. There was a company in York, as I understood, they went on a business. And they had a wooden building which would have been suitable for the band hall. So the band members took the old building apart, section by section. They brought the lumber up here on horse and wagon loaded it on a big horse-driven trailer and built the band hall with this leftover wood from the Black Car Company and re-erected the band in its current location. Every community had their own band. That was their form of entertainment. A number of these bands went out of existence because they had no place to, to play or uh, to practice. And a lot of places have come to me wishing they had their own band hall. We have our home, we have the band hall. As far as I know, we're one of the only ones in central Pennsylvania that owns their own band hall. So the band hall has become kind of like our fraternity house. It gives you something to work for. A lot of good feelings and warmth around the band hall. It's a root in Emmingsville. That is the home, and it has been the home. It's one of the things that I like is we're the Emmingsville band, and if you look in the town of Emmingsville, there isn't anything else that really says Emmingsville like the Emmingsville band does. We control our own destiny. The idea that you have a place that you can come to, have relationships with people that you know, people that you like, doing what you love to do, playing the music, and it's in your home. Case closed. Community bands were a staple of American society in the late 19th century. At one point, nearly every township, borough, and community in York County had its own town band. Emmicksville was no exception. But what distinguishes this town's band from many of the others, in addition to the tenacity and commitment of its membership, is that it has a place to call its home. Now let's meet some of the members of the band to hear about their connection to the organization and how they would define what the Emmingsville Band is. My name is Barry Boyer and I play clarinet. My name is Dana Grove. I play trombone. My name is Paula Nelson. I play the play Julie Heindel. I play the Barry Sax. I am Bruce Wallace. I play trumpet. My name is Ryan. I play trombone. My name is Mabel and I play the glove and spiel. Susan Peterson. I'm Sam Silo, but I'm her, I'm her daughter. We both play clarinet. Chris Surratt. I play the B flat trumpet. My name is Jane Lynn and I play bassoon. My name is Kirk Crane and I play the euphonium. My name is Linda Wright and I play the flute. At Mail Horn, I play the alto sax. My name is Robert Horn. I play third trombone. My name is Juliet. I'm Chris Morningstar. I'm Anthony Nedoff. I play the tenor sax. My name is uh, Zachary. I play baritone. My name is James Roush. I play uh, various instruments all on the saxophone. My name is Doug Kirk. Christine Kirk. Michael Kirk. I play the trumpet, alto sax, the flute, and the piccolo. I'm Joanne Olakowski, and my husband Ed Olakowski was a band member. Played the trombone. Been with the band since about 
2003. I think it's been 33, maybe 34 years. I'm thinking it was like 1998. I think it was around the late 2000s. 2004, 2005. September of this past year, so it's approaching one year. About a year now? For about a year and a half now. And I started with the band at the Christmas season of 2019. I think I've been in the band about 10 years. When did we start? I've been in since I was a junior in high school. I've been in 18 years. I've actually been in the band longer than I haven't. This coming fall will be my third year. This is my sixth year. About half my life, 12 years. 13 years. 21 years. The band is a fun, relaxed group of local musicians of varying abilities, making music for all sorts of events throughout York County. The Emmitsville Band is a community concert band based in Emmitsville. I think of the Emmitsville band as the epitome of a community band. We, I think, are the epitome of a community band. The Emmitsville band is definitely a community band. Definitely a community band. A true community band. It is the community band that has been around since 1878. Around 1878, which makes us one of the oldest bands in America. So it's been around for a long time. We're just guys like myself that played for a while, set it aside for a little bit, and decided, you know, I had fun playing. I want to have fun again. It's a fun band. The music is fun. It's a very welcoming organization. There's no tryouts. Anybody can join it, can play an instrument. We play for fun. Especially now, we have a good group of people. Good people. Great people. Talented people. Everybody's just really friendly. There's no, oh, you're not good enough, or you screwed that up. There's none of that. It's all fun. This is family, all ages. All ages. It doesn't matter how old you are. We have fun together. Friendly, outgoing. They have a lot of fun together, kids and carrying on. Very dedicated amateur musicians. Very laid back. Have a good time through music. The emphasis isn't on making everything perfect. It doesn't matter how well you play. The emphasis of on sounding good, but also enjoying ourselves when we do it. It's all about the people. You know, the friendships you build within the band. It's just a matter of community when you're here. It's a place to improve my instrument, encounter new music that I wouldn't encounter if I just stay in the basement and play. A great place to encounter people that I would never encounter. Have a few laughs that I wouldn't have had otherwise. It's like an all-American thing. You know, that's the way I think. The Emmitsville Band is an historical music organization that stood the test of time because of its welcoming nature where musicians continue to learn and hone their skills, its familial environment and sense of fostering community, and the commitment to being good stewards of their band hall. Let's hear more about what kind of music the band plays. The music that we play is everything under the sun. We play a variety of music. A lot of diverse music. It is a wide variety of music. I think a wide variety. A wide range of variety. We're an everything band. A little bit of everything. We do everything. It's a mix of everything. Emmitsville Band plays many different genres of music. The thing about this community band is it plays all styles of music. Marches, polkas, popular music, hymns. We play marches, medleys, jazz. marches, jazz. Compilation pieces. Classic stuff all the way up to more modern music. So. Marches, polkas, <laughs> jazz. A lot of marches. We play. Marches, we play kingdom songs, we play religious songs. We're going to get a little bit more modern stuff here of late. We've added a lot of 70s, 80s, up to 2000s music. Sacred, patriotic, marches, popular, waltzes, polkas, swing, show tunes, Christmas, Irish, and Dixieland. Marches, swing, jazz, pop music from the 60s, 70s, 80s. There are musicals. It's not one style of music, it's the variety. Pop to rock to classic marches. Yes, we play polkas, waltzes, show tunes. It's everything. It's a pretty diverse set list. And that's one of the reasons why a community band, if you're trying to build your experience, is so great because you are never going to encounter this diversity of material anywhere else, really. Our repertoire extends back multiple centuries and everyone has something that they can appreciate. All of it together makes a really nice sound. 
I really don't have a favorite genre of music, which I guess is reflected in, in sort of what Emmingsville does. I and mean, when we play big band music, we always keep a couple polkas handy just in case. Still don't remember ever seeing anyone get up in polka during one of our concerts, but we're ready. Well, as a trombone player, I favor the marches. I love to play marches. I like marches. Susa marches. I love marches. John Susa marches? Oh, yeah. Anything Sousa. I can listen to them all the time. I've always told everybody that at my funeral, I want Stars and Stripes forever. So I'm a March guy. I love John Philip Sousa. I'm a fan of the pop pieces, but most of the stuff that I like is the, the bread and butter marches. It yeah. just makes your heart beat fast. The ones I enjoy the most are also the most challenging. I would say those are the swing songs. I like to play the big band music. I love jazz. I also like the jazz. I like it all, but I like the jazz. Some of the pieces are challenging, which is wonderful. Personally, I really like the 40s. I think I like, I enjoy the variety. I enjoy uh, individual songs. It's fun to play some of the medleys. The big medley pieces are nice. Beatles medley, oh man. I like the theme songs, like Under the Sea and Star Wars. I love the religious folder. Well, I really enjoyed the Christmas stuff. Jumping in during the holiday season, it was a great way to start. I just love Christmas music in general. My favorite songs to play in the band are the ones that not only the audience enjoys listening to, but the band also likes to play. And you can definitely tell when there's a song or two that the band can really get behind. You can feel the energy. We enjoy the patriotic music. I think we're both real patriotic. I'm a veteran. So anything patriotic we like, anything romantic we like, it's nice and diverse, you know, I mean, like, there were uh, disco songs from the 70s and, you know, kind of a really nice band of, of All-American. The Emmonsville Band is the All-American kind of music, you know. We want to appeal to the young, the old, and just a fun atmosphere. It's quite a repertoire. I, I never got tired of it, and it didn't seem ever repetitious when I would come to performance after performance. You do it well, all of it. The music that I pick for when we're playing, I try to be diverse because we play a lot of different types of venues. We usually customize that for the, the type of venue and event that we're playing. But having that wide variety is the main reason, in my opinion, that we have some of the customers that we do today. So when we were playing in a nursing home, if you play all the old songs that they remember, they, were, they really get into the music then. Retirement homes. So their music, if you were, is music of the 40s and 50s. We play some community events where there might be 20 or 30 year olds there with little kids. So we have to play something a little bit more modern. When you stop and think about it, we can play anything a symphony orchestra can play. We can play anything a drum and bugle corps can play. We can play anything that a wind ensemble can play. Concert band music, marching band music. The scope is, is tremendous. So if you want to get into an organization where you can get exposure to classical music, semi-classical music, marches, whatever, we're the group to join. They really can play it all. It's interesting to discover the variety and how the musicians in the band first joined. Let's see if you can identify any trends. I got hooked up with my trumpet teacher from 35 years ago, and I said, well, what do I do? He said the same thing he told me 35 years ago, to join a community band. I heard about the Emmingsville band because I live a few miles away and every time I drive up and down the street I see the trailer. Yeah, about six, seven years ago my wife and I started looking for some kind of venue or you know, community band, something to play in just to play a little more. And Emmingsville band happens to be just a couple miles down the road from where we live so it was kind of a win-win. My wife played clarinet and she wanted to play, so she did all the research and Emmingsville was the closest and she said, let's go try this, so off we went and we tried. Well, I was doing a search because I was feeling really a void. I, I moved from Chambersburg to the York area and something popped up on Facebook and I ended up coming to practice and the rest is history. Well, I love to play, and at some point in time, I became aware that there was a whole community of bands at that, that, that time. I was looking around for places to play, and my aunt, Dita, she told me, you know, the Amy School Band, you should go there. 
Actually, her husband, my uncle Wayne, his brother, Charlie Jacoby, he played in the band until he passed away. Sat in the second row of flutes and played beside Linda Wright. After the Southern York County Band folded, my dad, Earl Lehman, played in a couple of local bands. He said the Emmicksville Band was the most like Southern York County Band because the people were friendly and it was like a family. How did I hear about the band? Well, it kind of started with internet dating. I actually live 100 miles away from here, but through the magic of the internet, I met somebody who lived here in York and we got along fantastically. So when I retired in the spring of 2019, I started spending six days down here and one day a week I'd go home, play with the band up there and then come back down. Since I was down here so much, I thought, well, what can I play somebody down here to? So he suggested this band and on the Old Fashioned Carnival, I come up and introduced myself to Jim, the director, and I said, would you like a bassoon player? And he said, sure. So he said the first rehearsal is the first Monday in November. So I showed up with student in hand, only to find out that it was actually the banquet. So they fed me, and like a stray dog, I just kept coming back. I was taking lessons from Marlon Ryan. He was the director at one time of the band, and I was in my late 20s. And he suggested I come up and sit in on the band sometime. And I mentioned that I would like to start up again as, a, as an adult. After my wife bought me a trombone for Christmas, I, I found the Amesville Band and started playing with uh, Imageville in about 2007. But I worked at the New York Wirecloth Company and I ran the boiler uh, for the Christmas concert and Don Ryan, who was the director of the band at that time, was the whistle master. He played the Christmas carols on the whistle. I know I spoke to him about it and shortly after that, I joined the band. I actually heard about the band through uh, Don Ryan. I had gotten my alto sax through him and walking into joining my senior year of high school. 2005, I realized that I really enjoyed playing in a band, and the high school band and marching band was coming to an end, and I really wanted to continue playing my alto sax, so I figured I'd give a band a try, and been in ever since. When I joined, I joined because I was taking trumpet lessons from Donald Bryan, mm -hmm. who was then director of the band, and he talked me into it, said it would be a good experience, and I joined the same time with my dad. I played in the early 80s, and when I was in high school for about a year or two with my flute. And then I saw an article in the late 2000s for Amon's Open meeting members. And so I rejoined with my alto sax. And then later, talking with Don Ryan, found out there was a Barry sax that wasn't being used. So they refurbished it, and that's what I've been playing ever since. It's really been a family affair for the last 20 years. It was my husband who was looking for a band to be in. He had played the trumpet for high school as well. In fact, we went to high school together and played in the band together. And I was trying to help him find a place to play. And he kept saying, we gotta find somewhere. But my daughter was taking uh, singing lessons as a kid and her singing teacher knew Don Ryan and had heard of the Emmonsville Band. That was my first indication that that could be somewhere that my husband could play. He checked it out and he came here for the first time when my oldest son, Doug, was 14. My dad, who had always wanted to join a community band, I was looking for somewhere to play, and uh, he and I both joined at the same time. We came here uh, at the beginning of uh, practice season in 2002. That's how we started playing with the band. My other son was only a little kid. He was like a toddler. So Michael and I would go watch the Emmonsville Band well, my oldest son and my husband were in it. We went all over the town, got to learn the town because we were new to York. Had only been here for like two or three years. It was always on my mind, like when Michael grows up, when he's old enough to play with the band, I'm gonna join with him. We're gonna join just like my son and my husband did. And sure enough, that happened you know, 10 years ago when Mike was um, like in middle school, we joined together. And, uh, and, and the four of us were all playing in the Emmonsville band for a few years. For me, my favorite part of the band is the fact that I get to do it with my whole family. My brother, who's the president of the band, 
uh, it's theater that I joined back when I was in middle school when I was 12 years old and at first I was really reluctant but with a little bit of encouragement as well as my mom joining at the same time as I did it, it was seamless and from then on it's been a part of my yearly routine I'm a part of a big musical family so the fact I get to share that experience with the rest of my family is something I always cherish I first heard about the band with a member from our church who was in the band at the time and he talked to us about joining the bands. We've got people in here who can't drive yet because they're not old enough. Well, I didn't drive. She I didn't was drive. too young. Exactly. So she I didn't, didn't drive. I didn't drive, so I needed a ride. And I thought it would be nice to have her start back up. When I was going into seventh grade, I was learning the alto saxophone, and Michael Kirk was my teacher. One day, I think he just brought up the fact that the Emmingsville band existed and said I should join. I heard it from Michael Kirk, who helped out with uh, the York River Marching Band, and then after he was done with the season, sent an email about the band's story, and I was looking for some band to do over the summer. Um, same thing, I wanted something to do. Chris Surratt, who's uh, another fellow trumpet player, told me about the band and said, hey, we could use some trumpet players. So I said, okay, I'll come and check it out. After that, I thought, hey, my daughter just happens to be a trumpet player. So I asked if uh, she could come and check it out too, and, and the rest is kind of history. I found the ad in the paper that said all individuals are, are musically inclined or are invited to come to the Emmingsville Band. Of course, being the nagging, I mean, the, uh, the wife that suggests things to a husband, I said, this sounds like it has your name on it. So he thought about it, but he hadn't played for so long. He hadn't even picked up the instrument for years. So he was hesitant. I said, go once and try, see what you think. Thankfully he did. He found that all levels of ability were accepted and uh, he never looked back. He found a whole brotherhood here, a, a real family, as did I. I came to every performance and often brought him to practices, so I got to know a lot of people too. And we even socialized with some of the band members outside of the performances. From word of mouth to newspapers, the band continues to prosper as a place for all amateur musicians in York County to call their home, and a group of people to call their second family. You may have noticed a surname that was repeated several times in that last segment. It's a name that York Countyans may be familiar with from another local musical venture, and that surname is the Ryan family. Who is the Ryan family, you may ask? To answer this question, we need to discuss the world record winning factory steam whistle Christmas concerts that occur each Christmas in York. Well, Christmas is coming, which means the York factory whistle is getting ready for its annual Christmas concert. In York County, Pennsylvania, Christmas Day is heralded at 134 decibels. I'm Don Ryan, the whistle master here in York, Pennsylvania in the United States of America. At 1215 every Christmas for the last 60 years, Don Ryan, the whistle master, and his father before him, takes his place at the controls. The boiler is hot, the pressure is up, and the men of the Ryan family are ready to go caroling. Don and his whistle earned a distinguished place in the Guinness Book of World Records. Marlon Ryan, the senior steam whistle master, his son Don Ryan, and his son Mark, playing the old factory whistle atop the New York Wire Company in New York, Pennsylvania. Okay, we all, is everybody ready then? Every Christmas at midnight, people in downtown York and for miles in each direction can hear the sound of the factory steam whistle, an unusual but historical tradition that's been a York County staple since 1925. The tradition of performing carols with a steam whistle at the New York Wire Cloth Company has been a part of the Ryan family since the 1950s, when Marlon Ryan became the factory whistle master. This quickly became a family endeavor, with Marlon ultimately passing the baton to his son, Donald Ryan, the current factory whistle master. At separate points in the Emmigsville band's history, both Donald Ryan and his late father, Marlon, directed the band. Their tenures as director spanned many decades, and their commitment to music in York County remains unparalleled. In 1974, under the direction of Marlon Ryan, the band had the privilege of performing at the William Penn Memorial Museum in Harrisburg, 
today known as the State Museum of Pennsylvania. Good afternoon. We are broadcasting live from the William Penn Museum in downtown Harrisburg inside Memorial Hall in this afternoon's concert with the Acme Cornet Band of Emmicksville, Pennsylvania. The performance was broadcast by WMSP, a local radio station. The Marlon Ryan era of directorship marked a significant period of growth for the band, not only as a York County band, but as a state-recognized ensemble. It helped put a village with a population of only a few thousand people on the map for the rest of the county and the Commonwealth. Ladies and gentlemen, the Emmicksville Band, under the direction of Mr. Marlon Ryan. Now, when I was director, I kind of like put a show on. There's a lot of talented people in this organization, and I like to show it off. I had at least eight to ten special musicians in the band because we have a lot of good musicians, not just playing, but they're very talented people in this band. And I wanted to get them up front, play solo, duets, um, the trombone special, like classes trombone. We got them up front and, and showed that off. We had the tubas, them basses for an example. We got the lower percussion all out front for them basses. It adds that extra show. I learned this from <laughs> the Lawrence Welk Show. They put on special numbers all the time. And I like to see special numbers. My dad did this the time he was directing. He, he followed like Lawrence Welk, the special numbers. We had vocalists in the band. Uh, even outside the band, we invited people in to sing. We put on all these different shows and people followed us all over the place. Like I said, he took after Long 12, putting a show on. And when I took over, I did the same. And my dad had a lot of connections too with a lot of the teachers that got people into the band. We just had a lot of fun. Everybody got along well together. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For the past century, a feeling of community pride and accomplishment has been prevalent in the small village of Emmicksville, York County, Pennsylvania. Emmicksville is located approximately five miles north of the city of York. The prestige of a small community is often judged by the quality and size of its community band. It provides entertainment for church picnics, park gatherings, parades, political campaigns, and celebrations of various sorts. The community band was and is one of the most important facets of community life and brings about the togetherness of a small community. The Acme Cornet Band of Emmicksville was organized on November 8, 1872 with a membership of 16 men and was in existence for 20 years. A period of 14 years passed with no band activities in this community. The Acme Cornet Band was reorganized on September 6, 1906. The first meeting was held in the engine room of the Acme Wagon Works. The records show that there were 18 charter members. It's important to understand the significant dates related to the Emmysville Band's history. November 8, 1872 is the day that the Acme Cornet Band of Emmysville was organized. However, it wasn't until June 24, 1878 that the band officially became incorporated in local records and court filings. A brief hiatus ensued in the early 1890s until ultimately the band reorganized on September 6, 1906. Finally, on Thanksgiving Day in 1918, the band acquired its band hall located in Emmysville and moved in. And ever since then, that's where they've called their home. If they go back into the old records, you're going to see Acme Cornet Band. There used to be a manufacturing company in Emmysville called the Acme Manufacturing Company. It was begun as the Acme Cornet Band because the American, the American Acme Company up the street. The band started in the Acme building up here north of Amicsville in the boiler room. They practiced there. Ditton Haver down the street here told me about they tore the black car company down and brought the lumber up on horse and buggy because he remembers riding on it to build this band hall made from the leftover lumber at the black car company. And then it morphed into the Amesville Band. And that's how things got started over the years. And as the announcer had mentioned, with every community having its own band, it was certainly a sense of pride for Emmysville's residents to have the band continuing its legacy even after the Acme Wagon Company ceased to exist. Fans of the band also have their own stories of what the organization means to them. 
Well, my name is Phyllis Bowers. I would say I've known about the Amingsville Band since 1946, when I was a little girl and grew up in this town. My name is Mae Duncan. I've known about the band probably since the day I was born. Grew up right here across the street from the band hall my dad played for his entire life until he died. My father was Ellis Mombaugh. He played alto horn. Summer times were picnic times. Every Saturday we went to a picnic or a carnival or something. And we are Sharon and Gary Blau. We live in Stewartstown. First encounter with uh, the band was at the Powder Mill Senior Center and saw the band then and we kind of became groupies after that and just followed you all from concert to concert. I love this how I spent many years growing up in Amesville. I just remember the music in the summer times when the band was practicing. As kids, on Monday evenings in the summertime, we would all run outside and listen to the band play because all the doors were open, windows were open, it was hot, nobody was air conditioned. Something I remember is when it was warm outside and we had the doors open, I remember people actually yeah. listening and saying, hey, I was listening to you play. It was just practice. And we would march up and down and do cartwheels and <laughs> pretend we were in parades. They enjoyed it and they, they came to thank us. When I was a young kid, and I mean like seven and younger, we lived directly across the street from the Amesville Band Hall in the black house that's there to this day. I remember when the band would sit in here in springtime when the windows are open and you could hear band practice outside. It was just something that got my attention way back then before I could even play one. It's memories for me is what it is. And you know, I had, I had such great memories going on in this town. Great, great, great memories. The Ladies Auxiliary of the Emmigsville Band plays an important part in this organization in that they cooperate with untiring efforts to sponsor two public turkey suppers a year as well as catering to banquets and wedding receptions. Profits are used to maintain the band's own band hall during the winter months. Now years ago, it was a very active ladies auxiliary. We had an auxiliary group here, the ladies auxiliary which was active in 76 when I joined. And at that point, the band was focused on having concerts here, having dinners here. We had suppers here. Used to be a lot of dinners. Growing up, it was the place to have community dinners. We had a functioning kitchen. We had a Thanksgiving dinner every Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving dinners we served for? The neighbor, well, for whomever. It was mostly focused in Emmingsville, for the residents of Emmingsville. They would put on a band banquet, that was, those were fundraisers. They would have a dance, they would have a concert. For a number of years, they served Lions Club meals. We furnished meals for them on a monthly basis. We had an annual ox roast and carnival on the grounds. And it just brings back a flood of memories. I, I am so in love with this town. I love the memories I have here. And the band was a very instrumental part of the community. Very, very. The Emmingsville Band was and is an essential part of the community, not just in the village of Emmingsville, but across York County. With performances each year from church picnics to parades and from festivals to retirement homes, the band has created plenty of memories. Well, I think the biggest thing I remember with the band was when I first started with the band. Every weekend, June, July, and August, we went to church picnics. Summer was spent at a different church picnic every weekend. We had something almost every week. The church picnics were a big thing, and there was always, always a band there. Always. That was a highlight of the evening. Eat an ice cream and listen to the band. As mobility increased through the 50s and 60s, Emmingsville sort of transitioned into what was known as the chicken corn soup circuit. We call it the corn soup circuit. Corn soup. Chicken corn soup circuit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, chicken corn soup. Chicken corn soup is a big part of church picnics. Every picnic that we went to, they had their good corn soup. Made a little different, but it was all good. Well, everybody has their own way of making chicken corn soup. Some leave something to be desired, but anyway, the, most of the picnics that we played at had chicken corn soup on their menu. Uh, that's about when I joined the band, the chicken corn soup circuit was in full swing. Boy, did we get some good food at those. Oh my <laughs> goodness, did we get good food at those picnics. Chicken corn soup. Cakewalks, watermelon, ice cream, you know, carnival atmosphere. Lollipop tosses, one of which broke my front tooth one year. 
some Saturdays or Sundays, we'd have two different concerts. We'd play at one church picnic from one to three. We'd have from three to five to drive to the next one, and we'd play at that church uh, from five to five to eight, maybe. The locals would follow the church picnics from location to location to location. But every weekend from the end of June into the middle of August was a church picnic somewhere. That's what the band was. I really liked playing uh, at church picnics back when we started. Uh, we had a, uh, we played a few and probably did half of them were church picnics. As church picnics started to fade out, that's when nursing homes started coming more online where they were looking for entertainment for their residents. They wanted their residents not only to be a place for them to live, but for them to enjoy their life. So we played probably in every nursing home that I can think of, at least in the northern part of York County. Some of the performances we do at the nursing homes is very nice, is very much appreciated. Those retirement homes where we're playing, especially when we get to the end, um, we're playing God Bless America. You know, when they stand up and they're singing along, that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, they yeah. really appreciate what we're doing. And that's been a staple. What's been fixed in al along with that are the community events. You know, a community wants to have an event, they need something as a focus. They need something in the background. So they, they, can, they can hire a community band. They can hire Emmingsville for two hours or three hours while the community is gathering and, you know, for whatever their, their occasion is. Young. I directed the band for two years. We used to play firemen carnivals, and there were four or five of them in the course of the summer. We used to play for a lot of Sunday school picnics, which used to be held early Saturday evening, and we did some park concerts. Sitting on the blanket in the summertime, when it's hot, getting an ice cream, getting a pop, and listening to the music. Kids running around and just having a good time. It brings the community together and it gives the opportunity to get an entertainment that you really can't find many places today uh, that the whole community can gather, from the youngest to the oldest. Well, considering I've lived in Amesville from the time I was born up to I uh, graduated high school, I certainly have a special memory of Amesville Band. Visiting all the different areas that we go to to perform is the biggest part it's great when you play for a, a real receptive audience. You can usually feel that energy from the audience as well as the band around you. It's amazing how many customers I visit as a band person who come up to me either before or after or both and have wonderful things to say. We always get a positive response. It sounded great. You folks have been performing hard. And it's just a great feeling to know that everybody's in it with you and enjoying it. It's in the faces and the applause of every place we play. All this kind of stuff that they turn back to me is wonderful. You would think the applause is obligatory, but you feel like after you play, you really feel the applause is for you and it's really meant for you. It's just a real sense of satisfaction whenever we conclude one of those concerts, whenever the concert was over, just feeling like we did a real good job. It's really amazing how they come and talk to us after the fact. I mean, there's some that walk away. I don't know, maybe so many stop and talk to us. I'm kind of animated, but they enjoy watching me play. Many times people have come up after the concert and talked to me and so forth and so on, and I always have a schedule in hand to them. And we had, over the years, there's been s several people uh, that they thought they come to all the band's concerts. I feel that my talents are appreciated. Let me put it that way. My favorite memories are probably just us here in the room having a good time. I think one of my favorite memories or favorite things is just um, the euphonium section. Um, the, the group of us, we've become good friends. And we have a lot of fun. We, we kid around, but we, we work hard uh, together. You know, we, all, we all got hats to wear and I guess or the troublemaker section maybe, but uh, it's just uh, the camaraderie, I think, and, and, and all of uh, friendships and, you know, that developed through that, I think has been a lot of fun. Jobs are fun, practices are fun. I think it really comes down to the, the people, the band, our fellow band members. So when I started at 10, the fellows all pitched in and helped me along with playing the trumpet and getting familiar and that, and they helped bring me around. I play trumpet, 
I played marimba, vibes. I played vibe solos here. That's what I like to do when I was directing. It was really a lot of fun. I had my children playing. The funniest memory I have of the band is early on when I was started and Don Ryan was the director, and we were at, uh, I believe, St. Peter's Church here on North George Street, and we were in the basement. And he went to start a song, and as he raised his hands, he stuck his baton into the ceiling tile. And it stuck, and he's pulling on it, and the ceiling tile's going like this. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, but he finally managed to yank it out and then start the song. So that, that's my, my favorite funny memory. This happens in uh, practices, but it also happens in concerts. But our director sometimes loses his baton, and a lot of times it goes flying into the flute section because we're right in front of him. So. My favorite part of being in the band was making fun of the director. <laughs> Jim would crack jokes and we would just laugh at him and us little clarinet section would crack jokes back at him and we just kind of... still happens. Okay. So, <laughs> it was just our own little private thing up there going on. A uh, favorite memory so far might just happen to be when the entire Emmonsville band maybe said hello to someone who was standing around in the midst of another band getting ready to play. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we were about to, I think it was, it was a parade. It was, it was a, a parade. Memorial Day parade. And my marching band was gonna be in it. I knew he was gonna be in it, but I didn't know like where they were and we were like one of the first people going on. I thought everybody would just be like, nah, we'll just roll on by. And everyone's like, hey, Juliet. I'm like, yes. <laughs> my face was so red. <laughs> St. Paul's Lutheran Church was definitely my favorite. St. Paul's, uh, when we got ice cream was definitely fun. My favorite was probably at the Elder's Home, right after Memorial Day. Playing at uh, St. Paul's was fun because the stage was so small, so we all got pushed off and the low brass got separated into two groups. One of my favorite memories from that concert is the uh, when a bunch of people got up and started dancing along with our music. I, I feel like when we go and play at places, it really helps people who may be feeling like lonely feel happy and like excited about today's modern culture. Especially when we play the military oh, music yes. and we recognize all the veterans. There's definitely a highlight of when we perform. When my daughter was in elementary school, she started to learn the trumpet and I remember she sat in on a Special Olympics job and the trumpet players just were great. They took her under their wings and she sat in. She, God love her, she probably could only play five weights at the time. But I mean, they just made her feel welcome and special. So uh, that I really appreciated. When she was in high school, she would come and sit in on the practices with me and she would do her homework while we practiced. And in break time, there were several members that would go over her homework with her. and. I just thought that was great. They would take time out of their break time and sit with her and do her homework with her. I think learning about York PA has been mostly a lot through this band. Well, we would all mingle before or after performances and I got to know a lot of, a lot of the other groupies that were there. It just always felt like family. You could pick up where you left off even though you didn't see someone for a month or two. One thing I did want to mention is the Barry sax that I play. I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere, and it might be stamped on the sax, but I think it was manufactured in 1914 and is still in service. And if you look at some of the old pictures, mm -hmm. I bet you'll see it in there. The heartwarming stories I hear time and again when I meet people and they say, I used to play in the band. and and I had such a good time there. I love those stories of, of the old timers and the old days. And a, a woman a couple years ago uh, presented Jim with an old uniform that I believe it was her father's when he played in the Amigsville band, when they still had uniform, band uniform. It was a beautiful, ancient uniform that was her father's. And she didn't know what to do with it, but I could tell it, it was special to her. That, I think that was very hard. I remember with the we played the one Special Olympics job and there was a participant that would stand behind Jim and direct, pretend he was directing. And when we were packing away, somebody suggested that he direct a song. And so we all got our horns back out and Jim gave him the baton and we played an easy march. 
and he was up there directing us and he did good he could keep the beat but I mean the smile on his face was just it was beautiful I loved it that's one of my favorite memories I remember I guess Ed's health declining and how the band members rallied in a very subtle way around him to help with his carrying of things, help with his loading of his instrument. Uh, it was just a subtle, comfortable family. Well, there was one that was out of the ordinary a couple of years ago. One of our members had passed away. Ed's decline was over years, um, and he stopped coming to the band at one point. When he did pass, I knew how much the band had meant to him, and I really wanted to somehow include that in the, the service that I had for him. His wife came to us and asked us to play at his memorial. I called one of the band members, and I said, any chance of the band coming to the memorial and playing? She was so thankful to us, and we were so happy to play for, for that event, and I think it was touching in a lot of ways. And... Oh my gosh. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed that day anyhow, but to see how many of the band members showed up on a weekend to give their day, to come midday, to play for an hour, um, to honor Ed, was just icing on the cake and my feelings for this band. You know, I'll always remember that. I really enjoyed the 4th of July. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, July 4th was, was just, fourth. it was really relaxing. It wasn't too hot of a day, although it was sunny. Uh, for us in the shade, it wasn't yeah. too hot. Well, and y'all go with the flow as far as wherever they sit, you know, kind of set you if you're outside. I mean, the one with the Lions Club, I mean, they were in the sun, sun beating down on them the whole entire time. I mean, talk about troopers. And like, the, the guest that was there, we all kind of huddled off to the side to get in the shade, but y'all hung in there the whole time. Very the hot. Same thing with Fourth of Fourth of July. So, like I said, you are so dedicated, and like I said, wherever they sit you, <laughs> you know, to perform, you just give it your you know give it your best right there. Right well, there. we like it because you're local, and that's important to my wife and I. And we're so impressed with with how professional you all sound. The experience and the practice really is evident uh, as far as how well you all do. You volunteer your time, mm -hmm. so you're taking away your time from your family, from your kids, from your wife, from fishing or hunting or doing whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. so my wife and I and others could enjoy our evening. But it's just remarkable that you sacrifice your time for something you love so we could enjoy it. I think it's good to expose, you know, like families enjoy it, it's safe, it's enjoyable, and just for the children to be exposed to a concert band that they may not have that opportunity. We went to Cadoris and we look over and there's a little girl who's maybe four or five years old, little white dress, she was there for a picnic. She had a stick and she was conducting she along. mimicking the conductor. So sweet, you know? Yeah. And, and you could really tell she was having a blast, but I mean, just to expose, you know, families and kids to things that they normally would not hear on a regular basis and get interested, you know, in, in the band. We've never walked away from a community band performance disappointed. You walk away with more knowledge than you walked in with. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to say thank you to each and every member mm -hmm. for, yeah. for their contributions to your band and you do it well. It's, it's a really great for the community. Keep up the good work is all I can tell you and we look forward to hearing more of you in the future. One time of year is particularly special for the Emmysville band and that is the holiday season. What I really remember most, well, I think it was Christmas morning, the band would walk down the street playing Christmas carols.
Christmas time, of course there were Christmas carols. Christmas carols through the community of, of Amigsville. We used to walk around town. Parading through the streets of Amigsville. I remember years ago walking through the community for Christmas and playing carols. One of my favorite jobs was the Christmas caroling that we used to do on Christmas morning. It's sort of hard because you have to leave your family. It's Christmas morning. I remember as a kid, I couldn't open any presents until after the band played because my dad was out with the band. I think that was probably my favorite. That was always very nice. Because the people that we did it for really did enjoy the music. The people enjoyed it in Amigsville. That was probably, I feel like, one of the biggest benefits for our community. They really enjoyed that. People expected us. It was part of Christmas. It wasn't Christmas without it. <laughs> we walked through town and when you hit that middle street in Emmingsville, it's row houses down both sides of the street. And as we're going up, we play every hundred feet or so, we play a different song. And people are out on their porches, they're seeing their neighbors. You saw the kids holding a new toy in their hand outside with the pajamas on. We would invite them in or we would hand cookies to the band members. And they give us food and <laughs> tip us and everything. It was great. I can remember giving them cookies and hot chocolate. The joy that was there was incredible. After the COVID-19 pandemic, the tradition of caroling through the streets had morphed into a new holiday tradition, and that was providing free community Christmas concerts in the comfort of the band hall. This was done in part to welcome more fans and residents of Emmingsville to have a large community event under one warm roof. In the last few years now, we've added the Christmas music in December. We introduced Christmas concerts. And that's also very fun. I really enjoy that. And the Christmas concerts, I think, are a nice way to give back to the community. It's a nice song you to be playing. I love the Christmas. Every single Christmas concert. I'd say Christmas is my favorite. That's my favorite kind of music to play. I've really enjoyed the Christmas concerts uh, that we've done in the past couple of years, uh, having the community come into the, the band hall. Mm -hmm. in, it's, a, it's a little more intimate than marching through the streets. Emmingsville Band, as far back as I know, with the exception of Christmas Morning Caroling, was a band that played from April until October. And then you took the winter off, you did practices, you got ready for the next season. We started playing Christmas music, just because a lot of us like playing Christmas music, and we called up the nursing homes and we said, hey, we'd like to come and play Christmas music for you. We go out and do Christmas programs for the people that have hired us to do work in the summertime. No charge. You had us play a concert in the summer. We'd like to come and play for you. And again, the reception that we get at the nursing homes, just seeing the joy on the residents' faces makes it all worthwhile. I think we make fun of Jim at Christmas time when we do the uh, Christmas programs. You know, at Christmas time, we have some of those very uh, interesting stories that Jim tells. He always likes to tell, he calls them funny Christmas jokes. They're groaners, you know, groaner jokes or whatever, but we make fun of them for that. Why do penguins prefer to swim in salt water? Because pepper makes them sneeze. Well, they can't all be good. <laughs> The Emmingsville Band is a registered nonprofit in York County. Its mission remains twofold, to be an outlet for all amateur musicians in the county to have a place to call their home, and to serve the Emmingsville and broader York County community through the art of musical performances. One of the hallmarks of a community band is it is a volunteer organization. We do not pick our players out. You can't make it this week or you can't make it that week. You can make this job, you can't make that job. You're fine. You're welcome here as much as you can come. Last summer I skipped one job because I went to Virginia on vacation. When I came back, somebody said, oh, welcome back. It's like, dang, they missed me. They noticed I wasn't here. When you're a member, everybody's invited to come out to play. We'd like you to come and play as many jobs as you can. I feel like that's what makes us different. It's like some bands, they want you to have an extensive musical background and been playing for years and, and you know, have played in pit orchestras and all these different organizations, but that's not really us. The Evansville band is extremely flexible with like, when you can be there. I know I missed four gigs in a row, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel like I have to be stressed when I say I can't make it practices themselves yeah we we play music 
but we also get to greet each other. You meet people, you have a conversation with people, and who knows, you may even have a laugh or two. I think every practice we have at least two or three laughs from something that came up. Everybody's teasing and laughing with each other. I've never witnessed anyone solemn when I come to a, a performance or a practice even. I purposely leave room in between songs to to get the new song up, but also to encourage you to talk to the person inside of you, to develop relationships with other with other musicians in the band so that it really feels like a second fam. What makes us special is inviting those people who haven't played for a while or are just getting started or like, oh, I want to try this instrument, but I haven't been able to try it in my you know, high school band. Let me try it here. Things like that. I, I think we're mm -hmm. open to that. And so band, obviously, as a community band, it's always helping the community. Well, I think we do a lot for music education in the in the community. You know, the, it's it's not only the the uh, structure of playing the music, but it's a little bit of the announcing and the history of a song, or the composer's background, or what they were thinking. That as we do a concert, we give the community a little bit of maybe music education that they may have missed over the years. A lot of the interest is from your conductor because he tells us what we're listening to, where the music originated, the year it was done, little side stories about, about the person who wrote it and the music and that sort of thing. And I've always found that to be interesting rather than just hearing something you don't know anything about it. Conductor keeps it very interesting. I think everybody appreciates that, that you know, he takes the time to dig something up and tell a story. And I think that, that just kind of makes it an impact. The one thing that I have learned from the band is I never knew who Carl King was. And we play a lot of Carl King marches. So even from a personal growth standpoint, I learned a lot just from being in the band the last three years. You know, from my perspective, I feel like I'm coming into a long legacy of playing for church events and community events and nursing homes and, and things like that. I can use my skills and something I enjoy to make other people happy, whether that's at a retirement home or a festival or a parade. It's always nice to be able to see people enjoying what we do. There's ways to give back to the community, but there's not many ways that you can do it while also doing a hobby that you enjoy, like playing music. You can pick up trash on the side of the road and that helps the community out, but you're probably not getting a lot of fun out of it. Here we have fun doing it. I love playing my instrument. I can do it. Share that joy with people who also love playing their instrument. And we're giving to the community. Playing for an appreciative audience is also rewarding as well. Especially nursing homes. They all come up to you and say how well they enjoy, how much they enjoyed it, how they love listening. People who say, I used to be in that band, or I, I played in the military, and then it brings up good memories for them. Mm -hmm. That's really nice, too. I think some of my favorite gigs are when we go to the retirement homes. It's an opportunity to, to give back a little bit, and bring joy to people that otherwise maybe aren't going to get out and see a, a concert or a program. There's always at least a few couples dancing, having fun, and it's just great to know that while some people's lives, especially the elderly, can get very monotonous. We can provide some joy. It was neat because we really saw people's eyes like when you go into a nursing home and a lot of people would be wheeled in in a wheelchair or you, know, you could tell they weren't getting around a lot. And just to, to see their eyes you know, brighten up when you play a song that they recognize or some of them would sing along and, and all. I think that really impacted me to, to want to come back and that's why we joined. And it just felt like we were bringing joy to, to somebody's life. I enjoy going to the nursing homes to see them keeping time with the music. It brings those people together for that day. Going to events like nursing homes helps people, especially like the elderly, helps them feel like they still matter, that they're still a part of the greater community and that we're willing to go out and do things for them. Like when we go and play at uh, senior homes, I feel like they enjoy it a lot to hear and musicians come and play for them. It's a lot of fun. Enjoy it. We're double downing on not only serving our community, but showing respect for our veterans in the community and all, all the big events. You know, it's 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 definitely a community in that. Uh, when we go to retirement homes and things like that, I see these going on people's faces and laughter at Jim's jokes. The people at the nursing homes really like it, like the jokes. 
It's fun. It's like fun to hear their reactions and the jokes. For an organization that's been active for well over a century in York, it hasn't come without its trials and tribulations. Despite ebbs and flows, there have been plenty of noteworthy achievements in recent times. When I started with the band, it wasn't unusual to have 10 people show up for a job, and it really seemed like the band may be fading. Today, we're certainly definitely not the case. You know, we at most jobs, we have at least 25, sometimes 35 people. It's a full band. It sounds fantastic. It, it's just seeing how it's grown over the years. What's been noteworthy this past season, just seeing that we've really grown that we've grown beyond what the band was when I started. The way that we've increased in size, in my opinion anyway, we've increased in quality. Places that we go, they want us to come back year after year. I think we've done well. We've done really well. We've, we've managed to get some good gigs and, and grown as people too. <laughs> it's been exciting to see high school students join. Uh, some of my kids uh, have, have played with us. I have one in high school. Um, it's, it's been neat to see, you know, both the older, the middle, the younger, just, just the breadth of, of ages that have come together to make music. When I first came to the band three and a half years ago, even though social media was prevalent and it still is now, we didn't have as big of a presence. From an outreach standpoint and growing the band and getting more gigs, I believe involving social media as far as an outreach and a, and a, a promotional tool for the band, I think has been outstanding and it continues to grow. I think we've done a great job transitioning ourselves into the 21st century, having a website, having social media accounts, putting our content out there for people to enjoy as a way to share what we do with the rest of the community has been great, not only to solicit new members, but to show people how much fun we have and hopefully hire us in the future at their next community event. Recording the music and releasing the music and knowing that people are listening to it and enjoying it or potentially using it to determine whether or not we get a job or not, that's an accomplishment. Sure. Coming from other bands, I was always impressed with how organized the band is. The binders that we have with all the music, how organized it is. That takes a lot of stress off of practices and performances. But the band is a drawing part. I think it is. And every time you go someplace, you put Amysville on the map. Every place you go, it's the Amysville band. People say, who's Amysville? Where's Amysville? What do they do? You know, and it's trying to recapture the history of this community. It's got a great history. It's a great history. A lot of bands envy us because we own our own band hall. One thing that's unique to the Edmonton band is that we own our own band hall. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Well, they built this building. They talk about bringing it here on horses and mules. I'm sure that was with a horse and buggy the next days. Even though cars were in their infancy at that point. Really, I am so glad we still have it. I believe the band hall is an asset to this band. It gives us a home, a rallying point, a place to call our own. It gives us a place to rehearse, a place to be proud of, a place to call home. This was a gathering place in the community. Well, it's, I'd say, an asset because you can maintain it with the funds from the church, but you probably make some money from it as well. We were able to figure out a way to keep it and, and keep it going. We've proven that we can evolve with times. I mean, we have to change. So we uh, adapted with the economy and, and figuring out how we can keep our band hall. And we were lucky enough to find a church to run it out. Even though it's rented out now, it gives them a home. Instead of the other way around, us playing at a church, we have a church staying in our band hall. It's the opposite. Yeah. So there you go. I think that makes us really unique. Mm -hmm. That's not something that people would necessarily realize unless they lived here. But it was just a common gathering place wherever we went. We went for soup. That which is the band was always playing. This community really loves the Amesville band in the sense that it's a, a pride for them. And the Amesville band was really, really Popular yeah, I think it's pretty neat we're still in Amicsville. They have their own band here in Amicsville. The band has such a rich history. I know that carrying on the legacy and the history is important in its own merit because it gives us something to strive towards, a sense of pride, a sense of community, a sense of importance in the Amicsville area and beyond in the York PA area. I think it's wonderful that the band has remained in business for all of these years. But I love this band. We really are a fiber of the community.
You may wonder what it's like to be a member of the Emmysville Band, and just what are the benefits of membership. It's a great bunch of people. We all get along very well, and everybody's chipping in, doing their thing. The camaraderie, I just like being around the other people. It's just a good all-around experience for people, I think. It's just how welcoming everybody's been. It's a really low-pressure environment. You come to this band and you feel welcomed. Everybody's welcome to come into the band here. We welcome everybody. There's no tryouts. You won't feel intimidated. Whatever level you're at, you're going to grow. This band strikes a great balance between welcoming people of every musician level, every proficiency of music, but also putting on a good show. And that balance is what makes us special. You, you get here and nobody knows whether you can even play or not, but they're, they just sit down and, you know, play the music and, oh, by the way, if you can't can't hit all the notes, just play every other measure or something, you know, so they're just very welcoming. Well, I always tell people it's it's the place to start playing again. It's very relaxed, it's very welcoming. You're not going to be left alone, you're going to be guided, and don't worry, it's, it's low pressure. <laughs> There's a, a lot of players out there who don't know what to do with themselves musically after they graduate from high school whether or not they go to college. There's a lot of instruments that end up sitting on shelves and collecting dust. Uh, this is a great way for people to reconnect with their musical selves and, and contribute in a way that is meaningful to the community. And by being part of the band, just the pride of, of being able to keep up with everybody else has forced me to develop a practice routine and, and that's one of the big benefits I get from being in a in the community band. It gives them playing experience. Well, when I first joined the band, I was rusty as could be. Dug my flute up out of the closet. It was really fun to get better. And I think I did. You know, I took the music home, practiced it. I felt like it was important to do as best as I could. Practicing regularly and getting the jobs, um, I, I'm probably playing the best I ever have my whole life. You know, so, some of the music is common from year to year, so you, you, know, you come into a year and some of the music's like, oh, I played this before and, and I did it better this year than I did last year, so it's... As I continued to play, I did get better. Being more confident in my playing. And it, it really is one of the best things that you can do to learn your instrument and build discipline, repetition, get help from people. I certainly have developed my skills over time where all those things come together in, in a band like this. Even not knowing who would come into the band and what their talent level will be, I can say with some certainty that there's, there's probably going to be someone in the band who has more talent that can influence them or less talent where they can influence somebody in the band. Even in the trombone section we have a young man who's in high school and we have someone who's much much older than I am. We have a huge gap in young and old but we all play together it's not intimidating, we all grow together, we all play together. I think it's really a great family activity and one that probably many people can't do or maybe don't think they can do, but should give it a try. Because it's uh, low pressure, it's a great way to start up again uh, playing your instrument and do it with your kid. When they're getting good enough, you go with them. I think it's really added a lot to our family. So I would encourage other families to do this. There's not many places where you can share a family activity like music in an environment like this. The sense of satisfaction you get from performing for people and seeing them smile and clap and sing along and dance along to what we do. Something about playing music when it all comes together and you're a part of it, there's nothing like that. It just gives you goosebumps. So in addition to the exposure of all the different styles of music, I've met people here that have helped me when I run into problems. Not just playing the notes better, but how to think about things, uh, how to understand and interpret music in a simpler way or a better way. If you haven't picked up your horn for 10 years, well, pick it up and as you get better and get used to playing it again, build up your embouchure, you will get better and you're welcome. I mean, there's nobody going to sit here and say, now nah, you played that flat. 
but or anything like that. I mean, it's like, come on, do your best, and we will welcome you. When you start, and I've seen this with quite a few people, they start, they haven't played for a number of years, they're going to play the third part, the second part, and as they get more comfortable, as they get more confident in themselves, as their ability increases from playing regularly, pretty soon they're, they're playing lead, if not... You know, if not on all the songs, on a lot of the songs. Everybody has been wonderful. You have people who are willing to push you to excel. And then you kind of like relax into it because you know, like nobody can hear you specifically playing for like the whole time. It helps build up stamina. This is a great group of people, like I said earlier, all ages. Everyone from every section is warm and inviting. It's about being a part of something bigger than yourself. So that's one of the great things. The band is about us having fun, us enjoying ourselves, but in the process of us enjoying ourselves, we are doing a service. I think of the retirement homes when we do the Christmas songs, the Christmas concerts that we do at retirement homes. All the residents get all gussied up and they come and they sit there and they're having the time of their lives. It's just a wonderful experience and we get as much out of it as they do. And this band absolutely helps you to feel like every single person who is in it matters in some way. They appreciate every one of us. Everybody's important. It's a nice mix of musicians, all backgrounds, all ages, we're up from all over. I'm from Helm. It's the entire York area. In fact, we've played all over the place. People from different walks of life, people from different communities all kind of gather to enjoy the, this wonderful performance. So it's a great feeling to go out and perform with a group like this because, you know, everybody's going to have your back and that we're all going to have a lot of fun when we're out there playing music. I would just say that um, our reception at our concerts, I know that everywhere we go, we're being paid to play. But when you go to gigs at, whether it's a community picnic or a senior center or a church, the reception is always the same. It's always very warm, warm and welcome. You know, a lot of times, like when you're packing up a meeting, and people say, that was great, you sounded great. I've had people say, what is that thing? And I have to explain to them that it's a bassoon and what it is. And The band has always been one of my comfort places in life. Whenever things get stressful, I, uh, I always look forward to uh, practice season, coming uh, once a week to do practices, and just kind of letting out a lot of my stress from the day, from the week possibly. As soon as I get behind my horn, and I get you know locked into music mode, all, you know, my stress just melts away a lot of the time, and uh, it becomes a place of, of comfort and happiness. I joined the band back in middle school, and there's a handful of people that are still with the band that were uh, in the band back in those days, too. And uh, I feel like I've gotten to know them a, a lot better, obviously, and uh, those, some of those people have watched me essentially grow up. It does become a family. They, they've watched me through graduating high school, college, uh, getting married and having a, a child of my own. The band itself becomes family. They're almost like a second family to me. Yeah, I think I would. I think I would just let them know the fun that we have, the camaraderie that we've you know, built between between band members, and, and the uh, just the joy uh, that we bring to, to people you know, in your County. It's just been a wonderful experience. Well, my father, I think, summed it up. It's a friendly group, and it's like family. Middle and high school students around the county have always been able to play with the band too. It provides them with a fun way to hone their skills over summer break and be part of a musical organization with adults from around the county. I'm from York Suburban. I am in the concert band, the jazz band, and the marching band. And I'm also involved with the York Youth Symphony and obviously the Evansville Band. I am also in York Suburban. I play concert band, concert choir, and Marching band. When I was drafting, we had 13 students from Central High School. Six or seven of them made districts. The I say is there's all to be in, in the band. The students that wanted to come out, they get a lot of playing experience. The more you play, the better you get. And their teachers even love that. The student will progress much, much faster, two or three times as fast, in their mastery of their instrument if they're involved with the community band. They'll be challenged to play all different types of music that they don't get in junior high or high school. I feel my musical ability has increased. I've definitely gotten better. And also like that feeling of getting to be a musician who goes to gigs is one I've never experienced and it's a lot of fun and makes me want to continue with a musical career. I'm just getting more comfortable with 
being able to play on Glockenspiel. It's given me much more of an opportunity to figure out music theory and what notes go where. It's just a better learning experience. It will make you a better player. You play under your band director in high school, you play in middle school, whatever, but that's their techniques and whatever. But as soon as you're playing under somebody else, it's like, oh, okay, I can do this better, or I can do that better. And it, it, it will improve you as a musician. When you get to the point where you're looking at district band, a region band, a state band, the people who had more experiences are the people who've got the edge. It's really great, I think, for students. That's how I came in. You know, you learn so much more. I've learned a lot. When I came in here just being a middle schooler, like I said, I was playing trumpet. Uh, started, like, I think, third third trumpet, and I sat beside Bruce Wallace. <laughs> So I guess it was two, three years I played trumpet, and then I switched to baritone, and this was kind of technically the first band I played alongside other baritone players because I went to Eastern York High School, small mm -hmm. high school. When I joined as a 12-year-old in middle school, I felt very intimidated because I felt like I wasn't good enough to be a part of the band, but because of how welcoming the people are in the band, I quickly got over that fear and turned that fear into becoming a better musician through the ability to play such a wide variety of music that I know that my peers at school weren't able to do. And with that, I was able to become a better musician because I was playing things that they were never even exposed to. Some of the pieces that we play have a lot of key changes, a lot of tempo changes within the music itself, and that alone will develop you as a musician if you let it. I said, if you want to go to competitions, oh yeah, it's going to help you. I, I feel like one of the biggest parts about being in this band is the people you meet. It's honestly just really amazing being able to interact and meet these people who have been playing instruments for 50, 60, 70 years. Because some of the people in this band are amazing musicians. And it's honestly really humbling to be able to play with them. Getting to know that just because you're young doesn't mean you can't be in this band full of people who are older than you. A lot of people have been playing for a really long time, so like everyone's really, really good. It's definitely a learning experience and you definitely get better from it. And being able to meet new people and getting new music varieties, it's just a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend it. A lot of music opportunities provided through school are so centered on either getting a grade for a music class or auditioning for an ensemble. And it's just really nice to be able to play music that is challenging enough to help me grow as a musician while still being able to be relaxed and have fun. And as like a person of my age, I've again never experienced playing a gig and it's, it's like you feel more freedom than you do with like a school concert or like a school marching band show. It's a lot more free reigning and it's just like a lot more relaxed than what would normally happen in the marching band show where it's like more like high stress and having to think about multiple components. And musically speaking, I joined the Emmingsville band to connect with the community more and I didn't really think the music would be that much of a step up from what I had already been playing. But it definitely was like a shock how different the music was and how I had to learn how to do different styles of music and I think that's really helped me improve as a musician, which makes it a lot it makes it really worth joining. For anyone in York County who plays a musical instrument, there's a place in the Emmysville band. Members were asked for their sales pitch that they would give to prospective members. If you've ever played an instrument, think back. You've probably played it in high school. Think back to high school and think how much fun you had playing the instrument. We're having that fun. In essence, we're the same camaraderie that you had in high school with your friends that are sitting there. We have now. If you're looking for an opportunity to join a community of not just musicians, but people who will be your friends and welcoming to an environment where you're not sure how you fare against other musicians, this is the place for you. Anybody can come and participate. It doesn't matter what level of musician you are. From the very beginning, I've always felt welcome. That's huge. We will not turn you away. We welcome musicians of every stripe, every playing proficiency. We welcome everybody. Doesn't matter your skill level. And that's one of the reasons why I believe the band is still here. There's no tryouts. You don't have to hit any milestones or, or, or pay any money. Just come and play because you love to play.
People play in this band because they enjoy playing and they enjoy being with other people who enjoy playing. Things are relaxed. You don't have to, like, oh my goodness, I've got to be super quiet or I've got to be super loud here or I can't mess up because, you know, it's like, yeah, you get it the next time. It's not about playing perfect. There's no stress. We don't chide people if they miss a flat on a song. We'll catch it the next time. It's not a big deal. It's more about gelling as a unit. What's great about this band is that we're super flexible. We understand that our members all have lives outside of the band. And it doesn't matter how often you show up, you're always welcome every time you come. We understand that not everybody's going to be able to make it out to all the rehearsals and all of the gigs, and that's perfectly fine. We're always happy to see our members out to the gigs and rehearsals that work for their schedule. We hear this a lot too, of people that haven't touched their instrument in uh, many, many years but would like to get back into playing uh, music to some degree. I think this band is a perfect opportunity for those people because of how flexible we are. We're happy to take members from all skill sets, ages, uh, and backgrounds and help them develop their skills uh, further. You know, if this is a hobby that you're interested in picking up, it's we're really easy people to get along with and, and, and enjoy, you know? We don't expect you to be awesome right off the bat. You can come and stink it up, or you can come and be a rock star. You can come and be social and play a few notes and be social with break and play a few notes. Just just come here. It's great. For, for anybody, just come out and do it. It's a night that you don't have to flip around the TV set trying to find something good to watch when there isn't anything. Very fun to read, feeling going. Play a lot of great music. It's a great way to Keep up on your uh, musical abilities if you really like uh, playing. Join a family. You, um, you're going to learn. You're going to uh, add to your um, knowledge, add to your abilities, and you're going to add to your friend pool. It's a win-win. I would encourage anybody to, if you're on the fence at all, just grab your machine and show up and try. Above all else, we just have fun. You know, don't worry about your technique or that you haven't played in a while. Come and have fun. It's just such a welcoming environment. Everyone here is super nice. All we do is just, you know, have a good time, play music with each other, and give back to the community. It's always a welcoming group. There's no tryouts. There's no, um, you know, there's no pressure. It's just all fun. <laughs> If you're looking for an opportunity to pick up your instrument again, or if you're a student looking to hone your skills in an environment with other musicians, this is the place for you to get involved. This is a way for you to get involved in your community, doing something fun, valuable, rewarding, and you can do it each year. I would definitely say to join. It's definitely worth it. Everybody's been very welcoming, and that's encouraging. It's a great experience, and the only way to have experiences is to be, to be willing to get up and give something a try. We're an inviting band, it's an inviting atmosphere, and it's worth it. The only thing is to try. We're one of the oldest bands in York with a great and diverse history. It's just so interesting how long this band has gone. I know I've talked about it before, but it really is a rare thing in here. Just come. Try it. Come out and have fun. Come out and have some fun. Just, just get here. Just uh, do it. I'd say just give it a shot. Come out and sit in with us. See what you think. You don't know what's good here until you try it. All you have to do is show up and try. Join the band. <laughs> the Emmysville Band is not just a community band. It's a musical family, a cultural staple, and an historic York County legacy. From Small Village Origins as a company band for the Acme Wagon Company to the oldest community band in the county with its own band hall, the Emmitsville Band stands as a testament to the enduring power of music and community.